Hi everybody, this is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. For those of you that like to spin, even if you're new or know very little or any level of spinner, I discovered the most fun thing ever is the great wheel. I never imagined myself ever having one. I didn't think about it. I didn't think that that's what I would do. I started off with a drop spindle, then moved to an e-spinner and it never crossed my mind until I heard my friend talk about how much fiber she could get spun and that she was walking a lot while she was doing it. And it just sounded very appealing to me because I sit a lot in front of the computer for work all day long. And I thought to get up and do my hobby while I'm moving, I usually listen to music, sometimes a glass of wine with me, and get all that spinning done and have fun in the meantime, it was great. So I went on the hunt for one and I, the first one I got, I didn't know anything about it. I was given a brief demo at the house on how it works and I spun just a little bit on it and I bought it and took it home. And then I struggled a lot and I thought it was me for a while. I thought it was this tool from the 1800s that needed more fine tuning or I wasn't doing something right and it created a lot of frustration and I couldn't really get any flow of spinning going and I methodically thought through it and worked with it a little every day and still could not get the drive band to stay on. It would not stay on and I knew from the get go there was a lot of play in the hub and that the wheel was warped. That was completely the problem, okay? Uh, my friend invited me over to use her great wheel that though didn't have those issues and I could spin all day long on it without the drive band ever coming off. So I realized right there and then I had bought a tool that was just a not proper working order. It's really cool that it's from the 1800s and it'll be great for somebody that wants it as a decoration or if they know how to fix warped wheels. But it didn't work for me because it's something I want to enjoy using every day. So I had another friend. I, I, I know a lot of people in Tampa Bay that like to spin and, and so we have this great network. So my other friend was not using her great wheel. It was in magnificent condition and she did want to sell it. So I bought it from her and I am in delight every single day because I can just get on it and spin what I want right off the bat and walk away. No issues, no problems, no anything. So my tips for you, if you're going to get a great wheel, which if you can get your hands on one and you're like what I'm talking about, standing and walking and moving and getting a lot done and just having a lot of fun, um, get one. But what you need is either <laughs> somebody that knows great wheels but any or all of this a person that really knows great wheels a woodworker a a, a blacksmith um you just really want to know what you're getting because the wheel can have some cracks it just depends on what kind of cracks and where this one has a little crack in the hub it doesn't affect anything uh, you just don't want major cracks and definitely you do not want a warped wheel at all. <laughs> uh, you want to be able to use it. So it can be challenging because it is from the 1800s, most of them, or however many years old they are, they're old. And there can be things wrong with them that need fixing. So just get hooked up with the right people and have them help you get the tool that will work for you and you will have a magnificent time. Another thing is you don't have to be a perfect spinner. You don't have to know how to do the long draw. At first it seems intimidating. Like how am I supposed to draw out this yarn with one hand? I'm so used to doing this all night long, you know, one, one version or the other all night long. And I thought one hand and one hand, how's that going to work? Well, first of all, if you prep your yarn really, really good, and it's all fluffy and not, you know, tangled. And I hear a combed top is great spinning from the fold. It will just pull right off. But um, this, I can get it over my thumb and I can get it to hook on here and just start to pull this 
And when that starts to happen and spin, it is like you are in spinning nirvana. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can do this all day long. It's so great. You watch it just flying and making, making yarn right there. It's so awesome. But even though I've prepared this, it doesn't always do that. And that's okay because then, because it's kind of sticky, it was mushed in a container. These locks were mushed for a few years. I bought it from my friend and they're a little bit matted. Uh, there's some a little lanolin in it. it makes it not flow. It doesn't matter because I can park and draft. You can spin the wheel, a little can come out. You can work it out, spin it some more, work it out, no big deal. And I don't try to spin perfect yarn at all. If some little chunks go through, if it's thicker in one part, thinner in another, it's okay. I also weave, so that makes it quite easy to use up imperfect, if you want to call it that, or uneven yarn, because when it's in a woven project, it doesn't look bad. And it's kind of nice when it has things that vary because it makes it a little more interesting. So my first skein was all variety of stuff, a little fluffy, thick, thin, fine, I'm gonna use it. Second skein got better. See how soft and fluffy it is? There's still thick parts, thin parts, but it's gonna be great woven. And this one recently got better yet. Still, I don't worry. And to this day, when I'm on there finishing up this Cormo, thick parts go through and I'm just having fun doing it. It's a super, super great hobby <laughs> facet of spinning. It's super great. I've been spinning Cormo on the Great Wheel. I got a box. This was stuffed, packed full of awesome Cormo locks. Uh, it had been packed for a while, so they were, they were kind of mushed together. I could not flick them out uh, like normal, or I did, but they were still sticking a lot together. So I ended up carding them with the carders to make this nice fluffy cloud, which was a little bit easier to spin than the flicked out locks. But I hear normally you can just flick the ends and spin from the fold of the lock and that works great. So you just have to go with the flow with what you got and what works. But it's great to prep your fiber first so that once you get on the spinning wheel, you can get flowing and get it going. So what's really great about these locks is that they're just so cute. And always, every time I look at them, it makes me think of crinkle cut french fries. And for some reason, that just makes it even more fun because it's not just a pile of fluff coming off an animal it's a really cool structure coming off an animal. It just makes it fun. I kind of hate brushing and combing that all out, but what can you do? You can't keep it. So you can just admire it and then prep it and spin it. I'm gonna show you what to look for when you're shopping for a great wheel. But again, I'm not the pro. I'm very, very new at this and I am just sharing with you how fun it really is. But there's a few things that I was taught when I brought the first wheel home that you can look for yourself. Here we have the hub. You can see this looks really nice. There's hardly any play whatsoever. That's just fine. This wheel's in great shape. There's a crack there. It doesn't affect anything at all. So that part's really nice. Here we have the miner's head. This is from the early 19th century. There is an accelerator that goes on here. I, I just don't have it in my possession right now. It's, I'm getting it soon. There you can see the pulley on the spindle. And then the spindle itself. And this is the tension device. So that is what helps me adjust the tension of the drive band. Here's what I was taught when I brought home my first wheel. You want to stand right at the camera's angle and look through, straight on, through your miner's head over the drive band at the wheel. You want to see that your wheel is spinning true. If it is completely warped and wobbled, 
that's going to be hard for you. You want a wheel that's mostly true. And this one was great. It's perfect. So that's just something to look for because in the old wheel, you could see the wheel wobble like this and I could see the string travel from one side to the other in one rotation. And that is why I had such a hard time getting the drive band to stay on because things had to be absolutely perfect. And even then, it, there is no perfect. It would fall off because I was just fighting a losing battle with such a warped wheel. So you want one true. This, the band has not come off yet. It's fabulous. When you get your great wheel, you can use any string. I got this from Home Depot, regular string. Then I was taught to wax it. I had to warm this up just a little bit in the microwave. Before you put the string, the drive band on your wheel, just run it through the wax. It helps make it tacky and helps make it stick. Great way to set up the great wheel spindle so that once you have all your yarn spun up here, you can quickly take it off, put another one on and keep on going and then ply your yarn later rather than just putting your yarn or spinning your yarn right onto the spindle and having to manually take it off. So what you do is you grab a straw and I leave a little room on this end so I can tape it and a fair amount of room on this end. So I still have some metal to wrap the yarn on, you'll see. All right, then we're gonna tape it so that it is on the metal, but I wanna be able to get it off later. Not completely around, because I need to be able to grab it. <laughs> I've learned the hard way everything. I wrapped it so much I can't get it off, and then I'm fighting with, with yarn and tape and everything. So there I'll be able to grab that later to get it off. Okay, this is my leader yarn. I'm just gonna tape it on. And I can just use the leaders over and over again. It's just this was a new straw because this is a new great wheel to me with a longer spindle. Okay, so now we have our leader and we're on. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how this goes. Wrap it up. Let it start getting some twist in the end. So, got our leader. I've got my prepped fiber. And we're gonna let the spin start to happen. You can see it start to grab that fiber. We're just gonna let it keep happening until it's got a nice hold on it. Dropped it out just a little bit. Get a little more twist in it. Okay, so it's grabbing on. We're gonna wrap it back on. You have to reverse the wheel, get it off the tip of the spindle and take it back on to your straw or the middle of the spindle. All right, so now the weak part where the leader joins the yarn is wrapped up and now it's all gonna be strong as long as we put enough twist in it. Once you get out as far as you want, take another spin of the wheel so it's nice and twisted. Reverse it, wrap your yarn up on your straw covered spindle. Hold this on here. This holds it when I have to stop. This also will hold it, say if I were done for the end of the day, it will hold my yarn and cover the point of that spindle so that I don't bump into it and get injured. All right, so now we're gonna draft it back. So here we go, put the twist in it. Do a little long draw out. It's kind of chunky because this fiber sticks and I still have to park and draft a little bit. No big deal. Super fun. It's nice to get up and walk and move while I'm spinning because there's so many, so much of this hobby that involves a lot of sitting. <laughs> spinning, the favorite part. In the evening, I spend for a couple hours sitting on my butt. So it's good to be walking. So you see how that goes. All right, do a little more talking through it. 
All right, oops, so I didn't get enough. Gotta have more twist in it to hold it, All right? So you see how I bring it out to the very tip, I know it's there, and start spinning it. I let my imperfect yarn go anyway, because it's gonna be fine. Park and draft it out. This does not slide very easy. I've had some where we do get that nice pull off the fold and I can just long draw back. All right, again, once I'm all the way out, I did another rotation of the wheel, bring it back, get it back on the spindle and wrap it up. Okay. Here's some tips for wrapping on the spindle. When I reverse it and bring it back on, I try to keep all the fiber between here and let it get thicker in this part. You do have really good control when you bring it back so that um, you don't want it going too far to this side or it'll mush out. It'll cover up where you've taped so you can't get your straw off. You don't want it to come too far this side. It'll start falling off and just become a lumpy mess. So try to work it between here and here, slowly controlling it. Thinner here, thicker here. I think they call it the beehive or something like that. But I found that works for me. Then when I go to take the straw off, I don't have extra fibers falling off the ends. Then it slides off to a wooden dowel, very easy. All right, my spindle is as full as I want it to be because it's already starting to mush off the ends. So I could have maybe gone a little bit more, but I didn't want to. All right, I released the tape from the spindle. My brilliant friend taught me about buying the dowel and cutting it up to size. It's about a foot using Got plenty of these around the house, drilling holes in the end of the corks. And when you want to take your yarn off your spindle, you just slide it, the straw, right over the dowel. It's nice and secure. And close the ends with your corks. And there you go. Now you can store this until it's time to ply it with the others. Brilliant, huh? I showed you when you take the straws off the spindle and put onto the wooden dowel, you then are able to store them. Once you're ready to ply them, I learned this again from a friend, I learned everything from somebody else, um, to create a box that will hold your dowels and then you're able to ply from there. Pretty handy. So it goes like this. I usually have my e-spinner, but right now it's tied up with another project. But then I'm able to have my two-ply spinning wonderfully out of here right onto my e-spinner. So that's how that works. And you can just go to town.